Thank you for joining us. This is CV Sciences. My name is Stuart Tonk, Vice President of the Science Regulation and Education Department, and we have a powerful and informative webinar prepared for you today. I want all of our participants to know that there are specials for our retailers, specials on our website. We are open for business. CV Sciences sees ourselves as an essential business, and we are here to help ease the suffering of others. Miles Cyril, one of our national educators who has a degree in experimental medicine, uh, earned a master's in studying COPD and is an expert on lung health. And today, he's going to take us through gut health and the protective role of CBD with new added information. Everybody wants to know how they might be able to help strengthen their immune system with what's going on right now. And you'll hear from Miles about the subject everyone wants to hear about. Miles, take it away. Thank you for the warm introduction, Stuart. And I just want to add that there is actually research out there that show that patients suffering from COPD do quite well when you start to give them probiotics. Because when we talk about gut health, we're not just talking about the intestines, we're talking about the health of the whole body. Okay, so this is why this conversation is so important right now, right at this very moment, while we're all stressing out about a number of different economic, sociological, epidemiological reasons. Now is the time to relax, take some CBD and a probiotic, and today we're going to learn why that's so important. That being said, I just need to get this out of the way. This content in this webinar is specifically for educational purposes and that even though we will be using some research to discuss potential uh, disease states that we're not talking about a treatment for any disease when we're talking about plus cbd oil and specifically what i wish to communicate to you today is gut health not gut dishealth and i want to read uh quote this article over here we're going to be looking at a lot of peer-reviewed scientific articles Gut health is a term increasingly used in the medical literature and by the food industry. It covers multiple positive aspects of the gastrointestinal tract, such as the effective digestion and absorption of food, the absence of GI illness, normal and stable intestinal microbiota. We're going to talk about what the heck a microbiome is and why that's so important. Effective immune status, that is on everybody's minds and state of well-being, okay? And then on the other side of the coin, we have CBD, this remarkable molecule, an ingredient from hemp, in which emerging research suggests it may benefit those that are suffering from stress, pain, inflammation, or mood disorders. Okay, well, what the heck does stress, pain, inflammation, and mood have to do with the gut? Well, there is something to the term gut feeling, and we're really going to break down the concept of the gut-brain connection and how I think when I travel all across the country and I hear stories of people having taken CBD and they say, well, it helped me with X, Y, and Z, right? And X, Y, and Z are all seemingly unrelated. Knee, back, emotional. How is it all related? Biochemically, physiologically, today we're going to talk about how the gut may control a number of different normal physiological processes within the body and how perhaps the power of CBD is not because it gets into the brain, but because it works within the gut to promote wellness. Because what we get out of CBD is a molecule that is researched to both inhibit the effects of stress and the effects of inflammation. And by the way, inflammation is a function of the immune system. Sometimes I need to remind people of that. It is a crucial component of the immune system. We need the right amounts of inflammation in order to combat COVID or, or whatever else, right? It's just when inflammation becomes rampant, how do you weather the cytokine storm? Does it become a problem? Inflammation and stress can feed each other. Stress can deplete the immune system through a number of different mechanisms, but when we're freaking out, we're constantly in a fight or flight response, the news is on all the time, and we're glued to it, 
cortisol rises, one of our stress hormones, and cortisol dampens our immune cells' ability to effectively mount an effective immune response, to adapt to the microbes all around the world, in front of us and outside of us, et cetera. So by calming aspects of our own stress health, it's going to support a number of different functions. We can triangulate the relationship between inflammation and stress as having to do with three essential processes in our body. We're gonna be talking about two of those three today, but I wanna show you this graph over here. Inflammation and stress and how we're able to mount a response in the respiratory tract, in our skin, in our brain, so on and so forth, has to do with the healthy and normal functioning of the gut, including the microbiome, which we're gonna talk a lot about today, the endocannabinoid system, which if you've heard other webinars from us, you'll be very familiar with, and we are still going to talk about it because it, we're just learning so much about it every day, and essential fatty acids, omega-3s. We're not going to talk about omega-3s as much today, but all three of these aspects are crucially important. Take your CBD, take your probiotic, and take your fish oil as a nutritional response support for inflammation and stress response. Okay, so now as we zoom in on gut health, specifically, keep bear in mind everything that I've just said about how stress and immunity play into this, and we're going to hash out that process. But I wanna make sure that all of us are at the same level here. So I'm just gonna take it from the very beginning. We're gonna define for us, what is the gut? The gut is referring to the digestive tract. Specifically, we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about the intestines, especially the small intestines, but also the large intestine, the colon. But there's something interesting going on here with the gut. From mouth to anus, the gut is basically one single tube that travels all, you know, it squiggles around all throughout the body. But because it's continuous as a tube, you can topologically morph your body into a donut. Humans are basically all walking donuts. The reason I bring this up is because even though the inside of your intestines feels like it's deep within your body, in many ways, it is still the exterior part of your body. It's still outside of you. The gut, with its multiple feet of surface area, is one of the largest places in which your immune system and the inside of your body responds to the outside of you. So keep this in mind. This is really important because any disruption of the barrier between what's inside of you and what's outside of you, that could lead to problems. Also, I bring this up because if the gut is continuous with the rest of our body, a lot of skin issues, eczema, psoriasis, acne, just throwing out some names there, are often related to the quality of the microbiome and the quality of what's happening within the gut. It's the reason why, you know, if you go off of gluten for a month, your skin might start to clear up. We'll go into that process too. A forgotten organ that is really crucial to understanding this whole picture is the microbiome. The microbiome, by and large, is built up of bacteria, which is one of these microorganisms. I have a little photograph over here of E. coli. E. coli is neither good nor bad, it just is. There are some pathogenic strains of E. coli, but a lot of your gut microbiome is made up of these creatures over here, okay? So these are small single cell organisms that very, very quickly replicate. So maybe every hour or so, they're gonna be able to replicate, which means that very quickly, uh, you could get billions, trillions of bacteria from a single organism. They can be infectious or they can be commensal. They can work with you, uh, they can work against you. We're gonna be talking a lot about the so-called probiotic bacteria that can be really uh, beneficial for our body. The human microbiome encompasses colonies of bacteria in the skin, in the mouth, the GI tract, the urogenital tract. It is all over the place. It is everywhere. the number of bacteria in our body have been estimated to be as many as 10 times to three times more than the number of human cells. So we're about 10 times more bacteria than we are human ourselves. We are host to this forgotten organ that's made up of 
trillions and trillions of microorganisms. By the way, the microbiome is not just bacteria. It's also fungi. You know, when we have candida overgrowth, that's because the healthy amounts of candida in your body might have gone to unhealthy amounts. There are too much of them, but even viruses and other types of species. So when we talk about uh, coronavirus actually now being found within uh, fecal matter, for example, Coronavirus, for some people, that might be a part of their microbiome, an unwanted part, but an, a part nonetheless. So the major place where we absorb bacteria from or we get bacteria from is from eating, basically. We get bacteria from fermented food, especially when we start to talk about the beneficial bacteria. Um, we're talking about kimchi, sauerkraut, uh, yogurt, Bulgarian yogurt especially, even the small holes in Swiss cheese is a reflection of the microbes that were used to ferment uh, those foods. And if you think about what uh, babies do, right, you know, when babies sample their environment, they're touching everything that's dirty. They're putting it in their mouths. And we should encourage this, right? It's the idea that children that are rolling around in the farm uh, growing up have a stronger immune system because they're taking in all of these bacteria and other species. The bacteria having a diverse microbiome is essential to strengthening tolerance within our immune system. Okay, we're going to talk about why that's going to be the case. So specifically, these commensal uh, probiotic bacteria have a protective role, and they have a protective role through a number of different mechanisms of action. So they can outcompete the infectious bacteria, they make nutrients for us, such as B vitamins and vitamin K2, which is essential for the absorption of calcium. Did you, did you know that probiotics make B vitamins for us? They can even sometimes make B, vitamin B12 for us, okay? So they're essential for a number of different things. They promote the digestion of macronutrients. We can feed them with fiber. Uh, this is another reason to eat your prebiotic food food that's rich in fiber because it feeds these bacteria that then go ahead and make vitamins for us. And they can stimulate and balance immune function, not just in the gut, but as I mentioned earlier, even in the lungs, so on and so forth. And I find this absolutely fascinating. While we're all concerned about stress levels, right? While we're all stressing out, it turns out that there are certain bacteria that can directly regulate neurotransmitters. What do I mean by that? Because this is, we're starting to hash out the gut brain connection over here, the gut stress connection. Never mind probiotics, I want to introduce you to you a term psychobiotics, bacterial neuroactive compounds produced by psychobiotic bacteri bacteria. Okay, this is a peer reviewed article. In the abstract, they write several molecules with neuroactive functions, such as GABA relaxation neurotransmitter, serotonin, dopamine, acetylcholine can be microbially derived, have been isolated from bacteria within the human gut. Yeah, we need to take care of our gut so that they can produce serotonin for us so that we can feel relaxed. And by the way, when serotonin was first discovered in the early 1900s, they isolated it from the gut nervous system, our second brain. They didn't call it serotonin, they called it enteramide after the enteric nervous system. Everybody's microbiome is an ecosystem. Your microbiome is a little bit different than mine because your uh, host genetics are different than mine, unless you're my twin. Your lifestyle is different than mine, most likely. Your diet is gonna be most likely different than mine. Stress levels, exercise levels, your fat consumption, your sugar consumption, your fiber consumption, whether you took antibiotics recently, other medications, all of that can influence the foliage of your specific forest in your microbiome. How many ferns are you growing? How many pine trees are you growing, right? So then that begs the question, what causes gut health to become poor? What causes somebody's forest to become burnt down? I think one of the biggest contributors is the standard American diet. SAD, SAD, foods like these can have a very depleting effect on the diversity of species within your microbiome. I'm gonna show you a paper from the uh, esteemed journal Cell 
titled U.S. Immigration Westernizes the Human Gut Microbiome. Specifically, they were looking at immigrants, uh, I believe, from uh, Vietnam. And U.S. immigration is associated with a loss of gut microbiome diversity. U.S. immigrants lose enzymes that are associated with plant fiber degradation. We don't eat enough vegetables. We eat too many red meats as, as Americans. And this loss of diversity is associated with obesity and is compounded across generations. It's not just food. Extensive impact of drugs that are not antibiotics on the human gut bacteria. Drugs that are not antibiotics can still have an antibiotic-like effect on some of our beneficial species. Look what they wrote. 27% of non-antibiotics inhibited the growth of at least one bacterial species. The side effects of anti-commensal drugs in humans resemble those of antibiotics. Moreover, one could speculate that pharmaceuticals used regularly in our times may be contributing to a decrease in microbiome diversity in modern Western societies. So the SSRI anti-depression drug that you may have been prescribed very well might be depleting the probiotic bacteria that are actually creating serotonin in your gut. So it's, uh, you know, we, we, it's clear that we need to do more research. The pharmaceutical industry needs to be more involved with understanding the impact of medications on the microbiome. Because every day I see new peer-reviewed articles out there underscoring the importance of having a healthy and diverse microbiome in a number of different conditions, whether that's brain, skin, liver, lungs, health, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what happens is an altered gut environment, antibiotics, diet, hygiene, pollutants, stress, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, can lead to a state called dysbiosis. And dysbiosis effectively is the state of having the wrong types of bacteria within your microbiome, an imbalance or maladaption on or inside the body. Too much candida, too much E. coli, not enough lactobacillus probiotic. So just to kind of zoom out for a moment, when people are happy, they're feeling good, their gut is in balance, homeostasis, you have the probiotic commensal bacteria, I want to, this, this graph over here, this is a cross section of the small intestines. So when it says over here, functional barrier, these sort of orangey cell structures, those are the cells of your small intestines and they're absorbing nutrients. And that's a critical barrier that it's only one cell thin. It needs to be thin enough to absorb nutrients, but it needs to be sturdy enough to repel undigested food particles and bacterial toxins, perhaps from bad bacteria. On the other side of that gut barrier is your immune system. We're gonna talk about that really shortly. But having all these probiotic bacteria here promote tolerance within the immune response. The problem is that under stress conditions, antibiotic conditions, high sugar, high fat, poor eating conditions, dysbiosis can occur which leads to a defect in that crucial gut barrier. And then undigested food particles and bacterial toxins cross that barrier and trigger the immune system, causing long-term dysregulation of that immune system and inflammation. All right, we're gonna talk about the immune system now. 70% of your immune system is located right around your gut. What did I say? Our bodies are donuts and the intestines represent a large surface area where your body is observing and absorbing all sorts of nutrients from the outside world. And so 70% of your immune system is right around your intestines, checking out everything that comes in and goes out, kind of like a border guard agent. And when you're eating well, it's nourishing your immune system. When your microbiome is intact, you have probiotic bacteria, peacekeeping bacteria, keeping in check the so-called bad bacteria on the left-hand side here of this image. You have your healthy epithelial barrier of the intestines. And on the other side of that barrier, 
are all sorts of immune cells. Immune cell, we're not going to go too deep into the immunology of this, but I want to point out the IgA plasma cell. That's a cell that produces an antibody called IgA. Probiotics, certain probiotic species are known to stimulate the production of the IgA antibody in the gut, which might be one of the reasons why certain probiotics are effective against viral infections, because we need a healthy IgA response in order to catch any viruses and neutralize them. And then now on the right-hand side, the altered gut environment leading to dysbiosis, a decrease in the peacekeeping probiotic bacteria leads to a damaged epithelial barrier. And then those bacteria, undigested food particles leak, leak across a leaky gut and then trigger all of those immune cells that should have been behaving tolerant and normally. Now they're going haywire, not knowing how to respond. And sometimes it's a slow, long-term chronic response. We're going to talk about the impact of disrupting that immune response in the gut on the whole body. Now, again, I'm going to remind you, inflammation is a crucial function of the immune system. Inflammation is neither good nor bad. It just is. We need some small amounts of inflammation. The inflammation when you exercise, the inflammation when you absorb you know, eat some spicy food or probiotic food. That's the Nietzsche. That's the Übermensch. What doesn't kill us makes a stronger part of inflammation, okay? And that builds homeostasis. That builds tolerance. That builds diversity within the microbiome. But when we're not feeding ourselves properly, when we're overdoing it, when our microbiome is disrupted, that can lead to chronic inflammation. And it's that lack of resolution in chronic inflammation that creates disease states. Because we find chronic inflammation in a number of different disease states. Basically, every type of disease of aging that Western medicine does not have a good answer for has a chronic inflammatory component. Chronic inflammation is fed by lifestyle, diet, and toxin exposure. Wait a minute. These are all the things that impact our microbiome. Chronic inflammation is found at the center of both RA and OA, arthritis, steel PD, depression, cancer, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, diabetes, et cetera, et cetera. And there's an increasing amount of research showing that dysbiosis leads to that leaky gut, and that leaky gut is really underpinning a number of different chronic inflammatory diseases that we do not have a good answer for. So I want to go back to that paper that I first read for you at the very beginning, gut health. Just read this paragraph with me. The GI barrier adjacent to the microbiota appears to be the key to understanding the complex mechanisms that maintain gut health. Any impairment of the GI barrier can increase the risk of developing infectious, <coughs> inflammatory, and functional GI diseases as well as extra intestinal diseases outside of the body, outside of the, the, the gut, I mean, excuse me, such as immune mediated and metabolic disorders. The quality of your gut barrier is essential to maintaining the health of your body. And if it becomes leaky, it could lead to problems. So now this is a little bit more of a simplified cartoon. You have the gut epithelium, small intestinal cells, Undigested food particles, toxins from bacteria, if they leak across that barrier and get into the bloodstream or the lymph, it's going to meet the immune system and trigger 70% of your immune system. And that's being associated, for example, with osteoarthritis. Now, we've always thought, you know, if you talk to a mainstream medical physician, osteoarthritis is bone on bone arthritis. It happens as you get older. You know, it's not immune mediated until later on when it, be, it becomes advanced. But I want to show you this article over here. A major component of this dysbiosis and leaky gut conversation is a compound that is found within bacteria. If anybody out there is a doctor or a nurse, thank you for, you know, keeping the hospitals running right now. But you probably know what LPS is for everybody else. LPS stands for lipopolysaccharide. 
is a big promoter of inflammation, is a component of bacteria, specifically a type of bacteria called gram-negative bacteria. And this, uh, you know, when, when you have dysbiosis, when you're not eating well, you're eating too much sugar, cheeseburgers, whatever, the bacteria are all fighting with each other, they're dying, they're shedding LPS, the LPS leaks across the barrier, profoundly triggers the immune response. And now in humans, they're finding that LPS is sneaking its way into the joints of people with osteoarthritis. And that is linked to the severity of osteoarthritis. That there is an immune mediated, potentially, microbiome mediated, potentially, response when it comes to arthritis and the gut. It's not just arthritis. Take a look at this. Marital distress, depression, and a leaky gut. Translocation of bacterial endotoxin as a pathway to inflammation. Look, leaky gut isn't for hippies anymore. Mainstream scientists are talking about leaky gut now. And in this article over here, they found that what they were doing is specifically taking healthy couples that had some level of marital distress, and they're measuring the body's response to that LPS bacterial toxin. Look what they wrote. Participants with more hostile marital interactions had higher levels of that LPS in their, our body's response to it than those that were less hostile. This bacterial LPS data illustrates how a distressed marriage and mood disorder history can promote a pro-inflammatory milieu through increased gut permeability, thus fueling other types of inflammation. If you're stressed out, that causes gut problems, and that could cause other problems, in other words. So just to summarize this list of potential diseases that have been researched to be associated with leaky gut, Inflammatory bowel disease, IBS, liver disease, fatty liver disease, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, kidney disease, heart failure, depression, on and on and on. Remember this list. I'm going to pause for a moment. I want to thread a needle for you. Because when I read that article, it triggered in my mind something that sounded similar from another article I read. And that other article I read was on the endocannabinoid system that researchers in the government, National Institutes of Health, are writing that if we can modulate the endocannabinoid system, that this holds therapeutic promise for a broad range of diseases, including neurodegenerative disease, cardiovascular disease, inflammatory disorders, metabolic syndrome. Wait a minute. Doesn't that list sound a little bit like the list I just read you about all of the diseases associated with leaky gut. You know, I had to tie this back into CBD. Well, the way that CBD works is primarily by regulating the endocannabinoid system. Well, what's the endocannabinoid system? I'm going to take some time just to explain this for you. The endocannabinoid system is found everywhere. It's in the brain. It's in the gut. It's in the skin. It's in the immune system. And CBD, by and large, works on the system, which I'm going to explain to you, is crucial for helping us stay alive, adapt to the world around us. So the reason I bring up the list of diseases that might be associated with disruption of the endocannabinoid system is to draw a parallel and a connection to the list of diseases associated with disruption of the gut barrier in a leaky gut. In 1998, Dr. Vincenzo DiMarzo wrote that it is our endocannabinoid system that is essential to life and relates messages that affect how we relax, eat, sleep, forget, and protect. And his latest research when I met him at the International Cannabinoid Research Symposium is on the gut. All of his new work is on understanding the relationship between our 100 trillion bacteria of our microbiome and how they speak directly to our endocannabinoid system. I took my selfie with him. He signed my book. He was a little bit weirded out as to why I was treating him like a celebrity. But he really has done quite a lot to helping us understand how important the system is for maintaining our health and well-being. This is psychoneuro 
gastroimmunology. This is mind gut body medicine now because the CB1 and CB2 receptors are found everywhere. CB1 is found mostly in the brain. Well, that's not true. It's primarily very highly concentrated in the brain. And CB1 receptors are what is responsible for the euphoric effects of weed consumption, THC consumption, whereas CB2 receptors are by and large found on immune cells primarily. And if you're deficient in some critical aspect of your endocannabinoid system, that is being associated with migraines, fibromyalgia, irritable bowel syndrome. Wait a minute. Irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, gut, gut stuff. If you're deficient in the endocannabinoid system, you might have gut stuff. Well, we were talking about probiotics earlier. Look at this article over here. Nature Medicine. You can't get more prestigious than that in science. Lactobacillus acidophilus probiotic modulates intestinal pain through cannabinoid receptors. The probiotics that you take in the refrigerator section at my old health food store, Cambridge Naturals, could directly regulate the receptors in our gut they're also found all over the body, cannabinoid receptors, and help you feel better. That might be one of the reasons why probiotics are good for you is the relationship between the gut immune system, the gut microbiota, and this endocannabinoid system. Because you find cannabinoid receptors all over the place. So in the small, uh, in the small intestine over here, we take a cross section of the small intestine. You find cannabinoid receptors in the immune cells, you find them in the gut epithelium, you find them in your second brain. This is why CBD might work for a number of different challenges. So when we talk about the role of cannabis in having a healthy effect for certain digestive disorders, it's because the CBD is in some way regulating some aspect of this receptor. I'm not gonna go into the exact mechanics today. That's for another webinar. But I'll bring some history into this. If we go back thousands of years, in the holy book of Zoroastrianism, they talk about the use of cannabis in a medical context, especially for digestive related challenges. In the third to the eighth centuries BCE, cannabis was recommended in India to balance the doshas, phlegm, katar, and diarrhea. So there's a long history of the use of cannabis in Central Asia for digestive challenges. That might have to do with the fact that we have those receptors all throughout the gut for the THC and CBD from cannabis to modulate. Now, fast forward to the present century. Dr. Sircha O'Sullivan at the University of Nottingham has done a lot to help us understand why CBD might be really useful for gut health. Now, I wanna bring this specifically back to leaky gut the title of this article uses the word intestinal permeability. That's the scientific term essentially for leaky gut. And there's actually direct evidence in cell culture that shows that both THC and CBD reduce permeability in a cell culture line of leaky gut, have a restorative effect on the tight junctions and the gut barrier. So then that was some of their earlier work. More recently, Dr. O'Sullivan conducted a double-blind placebo-controlled trial in humans demonstrating that CBD can prevent leaky gut. This is huge. This is very important. So again, not saying that CBD in the form of a supplement is the treatment for any disease, but I want to remind you, if CBD is able to repair a leaky gut, and leaky gut might be at the center for all of these chronic inflammatory diseases, that Western medicine doesn't have a good answer for, I'll let you to end the sentence and to put together the rest of the statement in your sentence. They actually found that aside from CBD, there was another compound that was very effective for reducing leaky gut called PEA. Keep that one in the back of your head. PEA is an endocannabinoid that all of us make. It's also available as a dietary supplement. We're almost at the end here. I wanna show you another article. This is incredibly exciting. This is some of the latest research. This is truly cutting edge. I'm very excited to tell you about this. A combination of THC and CBD 
is able to mitigate a mouse model of multiple sclerosis through the gut microbiome. Now, not in the United States because uh, we THC is a Schedule One substance, which means it's not allowed in a medication. But in 30 other countries, Canada, Germany, UK, there's a drug called Sativex that is used for the treatment of MS. And it combines THC and CBD, and it's pretty effective. So basically, in this article over here, they're studying that drug combination. And once they give the rodents the THC and CBD, you can see over here on the right-hand side that the rodents that were just given a placebo, uh, they don't do so well. But the clinical scores for the rodents given the combination of THC and CBD do pretty well. They're pretty healthy. By the way, this is that Sativex drug. The average dose of CBD minus the THC is about 30 milligrams, 20 to 30 milligrams of CBD a day. So that's not too different than what some of us might be using in the form of a supplement. Of course, minus the THC. Okay, so here's where it gets really nutty. This is where the paper takes a very unique and interesting turn. What they did is expose the rodents to THC and CBD. Then they took a fecal transplant from those rodents and gave that transplanted the microbiome from one set of rodents with MS that had were given the THC and CBD to another set of rodents with just the MS. And then those rodents with just the MS, they started to get better. They started to get better. They started to get better. The effects of THC and CBD remodeled the species within the microbiome. And then you could transplant those microbes into another rodent with just MS. And then that rodent starts to get better. There's no CBD and THC in that rodent. Just the effects of CBD and THC on the probiotic bacteria, on the microbiome. To me, this underscores how crucial CBD and cannabinoids from the plant cannabis may be for a number of different functions. I mean, sure, sure CBD gets into the brain and might reduce inflammation response directly within the brain. Sure, CBD gets into the body. But I can't help but postulate. I can't help but wonder if the majority of effects that CBD might be promoting in a person has to do with the effects directly within the gut. And that by changing the gut and remodeling the species there, that maybe that is what is supporting the entire body. I mean, think about it this way. If we're in, as Americans, and if you're outside of the country, hello, hopefully your food is better than us. Thank you for tuning in. But you know, if, if we're all Americans, we're all eating the standard American diet. Hopefully, you know, there are many of us that are eating much better than that. But by and large, Corn-fed beef rich in omega-6s and Twinkies and ding-dongs is the standard diet for, unfortunately, a huge amount of people. That is a depleting effect in the microbiome, which affects the quality of our resilience to stress. Okay, of course we're going to be hoarding toilet paper. Well, maybe not if you're constipated. Anyway, uh, that's going to affect our metabolism. That's going to affect our immune response. If we're stressed out, that's going to cause a leakiness in the gut boundary, right? Based on that, that article I showed you, marital distress and leaky gut. And that leaky gut is going to contribute to imbalanced immune responses and compromise our ability to fight infection and to deal with the aches and pains that might be in joints around us. Now we have CBD as a nutritional and functional food, not a cure for any disease, but we have a nutritional supplement that is able to get into the brain, get into the limbic system, the reptilian part of the brain, quiet down the parts of the brain that make us freak out at every little thing. We have CBD that can get into the immune system, get into the liver, and help us respond metabolically, immunologically, in a more profound manner, balanced manner, homeostatic manner. And then we have CBD with this latest research suggesting that it can get into the gut, alter the hundred trillion bacteria of the gut, the microbiome, and alter the defense of the barrier 
promote it, strengthen it, and allow it to be more functional because that has effects on the whole body. That's not a magic bullet. That is a nutritional tool for brain, immune, liver, gut balance. And I think it's just a wonderful accident of nature, happy accident, that CBD is able to biochemically do all of these things. So I want to think big here. This is the closing slide. We have hemp. We didn't, I didn't even talk about the other 499 molecules in the hemp plant that might also contribute to healthy gut product. This is why I always want to look for a full spectrum extract because the other stuff beyond CBD is very important for supporting gut health too. But hemp, hemp is more than just what it does for us biochemically, nutritionally. We can take the part of the top part of the plant and use that for CBD, and then the bottom two third parts, uh, sorry, bottom two thirds of that hemp plant can be used to make car parts. The hemp plant cleans up soil, pulls carbon out of the atmosphere. Hemp absolutely will become a future part of the future of American industry. It works at a sociological level, and we have this hemp plant that works on a biochemical level. So that's why on the left-hand side, I have a galaxy all the way down on the right-hand side to a cell because hemp is the glue that can bring our whole alignment back into balance. And there still is research coming out about this stuff every single day. The endocannabinoid system is still mysterious. So to answer the most common question that I get when I travel, what dose do I take? Because your endocannabinoid system is different than mine, everybody is going to respond a little bit differently. Start with a low dose of a hemp-derived CBD product and work your way up until you start to notice yourself feeling more resilient, whole, and complete, and feeling comfortable in your own skin. Thank you so much for today and for this opportunity. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Miles, thank you so much for what a beautiful and elegant uh, presentation. And we do have some questions that have come through for you. And so we'll just go through them uh, quickly here one, one at a time. Um, you were talking about uh, the, the leaky gut a little bit. And so would you go a little bit deeper? I mean, just review leaky gut from A to B to C in a couple of minutes, if you will, when you were talking about it, if you can just be a little bit more precise on what you were saying. And I apologize for speeding through the presentation. I wanted to make sure that we could touch upon everything. The gut epithelium, this is the lining of the small intestines, is about one cell thin. It needs to be thin enough to absorb all sorts of nutrients, vitamins, protein, macronutrients, but it needs to be resilient and thick enough to repel any types of bacterial toxins, et cetera. If the tight junctions that hold together each single cell of the epithelium become weakened and spaces start to open up between those cells, then it can let in, leak in, bacterial toxins, gluten, and other undigested food particles. And they're not supposed to be there. The immune cells immediately on the other side of that gut barrier sniff out what's not supposed to be there and kind of sound the alarm. And if the alarm is continuously sounded, well, that, that's the beginning of chronic inflammation. So I'm not saying that if you have a leaky gut, you're going to wind up with rheumatoid arthritis right away. But what I'm suggesting is that a lifetime of poor eating choices and not taking care of our microbiome might contribute to a number of issues later on in life because the immune system does not know how to respond when you're constantly letting in, leaking in various types of toxins and other issues. I apologize if I skipped over leaky gut uh, or I didn't give it as much attention as it was due because that is kind of the crux of my argument here. And then I'm suggesting based on the research that CBD yeah. is able to repair those tight junctions and bring it all back to together. 
Miles, thank you very much. No, that was excellent, and, and it did come across the first time and even clearer the second time. So now let's switch over to probiotics in general, sort of the uh, with the commonly available probiotics that are out there. Um, sort of what are the benefits that you see that people can expect? And in addition to that, what about the combination of probiotics and CBD? Is there an added benefit? Is there a counterproductive benefit? Because of, you know, there are some reports that CBD may be antimicrobial in terms of its ability to um, even work on drug resistant bacteria. So, A, let's talk a little bit about sort of the general benefits commonly available probiotics might confer, and should we combine with CBD, and is there any risk of combining them together? So, the risk of combining them together is currently unclear. The research has not been done. Here's what I want to tell you. CBD is being researched to actually be very effective at killing certain types of drug resistant staph and strep. That's wonderful news. And natural products do something a little bit interesting. Not always. There are some natural products that are just great at killing everything. But there are some natural products that, uh, and I apologize for making this so simple, they kill the bad bugs, but they preserve the good bugs. <laughs> So uh, it's possible, and we can't say for sure until we do the research, that CBD might actually promote the beneficial bacteria, the probiotic bacteria. But in the meantime, I always tell people that if you're going to take CBD together with probiotics, which is something that I do, to at least space it out by an hour, maybe 30 minutes, just to make sure that there is not any overlap, okay? Um, otherwise, the most common effects that I see out of taking a probiotic is improved regularity. And this may surprise some people, but we should be using the bathroom. We should be having a bowel movement for every meal that we eat. Because, you know, it's, it, that's important for effective detoxification. So when I take the right probiotic, and I don't mean to be crude, and I use the bathroom three, four times a day, that means, okay, this is working. My favorite probiotics, I'm actually going to give a shout out to um, Just Thrive and Microbiome Labs. Uh, Kieran Krishnan is a very cool microbiologist. They're using soil bacteria. Uh, soil bacteria, so-called bacillus species, uh, are very hardy. And they actually have a study that showed that it can help to uh, support the intestinal barrier function. And I think it would be a very good pair together with CBD. Thank you, Miles, and we appreciate the shout out as well to your favorite probiotic. And there are many that are out there, just we're not picking on any one company. We like Essential Formulas and many other companies as well. So For just sure, to be yes. fair there. <laughs> and then also, so uh, Donna has a question. And um, so she's asking about if there's sort of a, a more restorative effect for gut health when THC, and if I may add THCA, if those are present or not, does the percentage matter? And before you answer the question, Donna, if you'd like to follow Miles's uh, lectures and some of the educational material that we are so fond of, CV Sciences TV, CV Sciences TV, uh, there are some fantastic talks that are up there. And there's one of our favorites from Ethan Rousseau, MD, called the Gut Talk, G-U-T for Grand Unified Theory. And he specifically talks about the combination of the different cannabinoids with prebiotics and probiotics and low carbohydrate, um, low sugar diets for uh, the gut brain immune system access. So please watch Ethan Rousseau at cbsciencestv.com on YouTube. I'm sorry, CV Sciences TV on YouTube and watch Miles. He has a series called A Minute with Miles that breaks down some of these topics one minute at a time. So, Miles, I know it's a loaded and complicated question. Donna wants to know, is there more restorative effects when THC is present or not? So does the percentage matter when we're talking about gut health? We just need more research to say for sure, okay? Uh, I realize the following, THC being a Schedule One substance in this country means that we are decades behind 
the research and where it should be. So hopefully, you know, and all, as I mentioned, all of these scientists that really figured out the ins and outs of the endocannabinoid system are starting to turn their attention towards the gut. So we might have an answer in a couple of years, but there is definitely work to do. Uh, what I will let you know is that there are a number of other nutrients that can also regulate cannabinoid receptors within the gut and might also help you feel good. Uh, outside of just CBD or THC, that includes resveratrol, that includes pomegranate. So there are other, you know, and I'm not even saying uh, to take them as capsules, right? Eat brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Eat your cruciferous vegetables. Eat your Napa cabbage, okay? Especially while we're considering... Um, you know, whatever, whatever's happening with, with immune health these days, right? This is going to have a number of beneficial effects, and some of those effects extend to supporting the microbiome and the gut. Now, there's actually one thing I will say about THC, and I'm certainly not opposed to THC in any way. I live in Massachusetts, which is a recreational state. Um, there is some research that show that THC, because it's so anti-inflammatory, that it can actually reduce our body's ability to effectively mount a good immune response against certain types of viruses. That was this, uh, based on a couple of animal studies anyway. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind. And I think the reason why a lot of people use THC and CBD in combination is because CBD can sometimes limit the side effects of using too much THC. Okay, Miles, now that leads right into the next question. I mean, let's face it, a lot of people on the call want to know. We've hear, we're hearing about cytokine storms. You just talked about the potential immunosuppressive effect of cannabinoids, which may be unwanted. So for what's going on in the world, I know you're not making any claims, but mm -hmm. how does CBD have an effect on the immune response in the gut? CBD can modulate the immune response. It's considered a general inflammation regulator. It's not a, it's not as potent as like a corticosteroid by far. Okay, so it's not going to have the dampening immune system blunting effect that I think doctors are concerned about with corticosteroids or even taking too much ibuprofen. Um, again, more research needs to be. Uh, used or uh, conducted, but I personally am taking CBD to give me a balanced inflammatory and immune response during these times. I am still taking my CBD products. So one more one more follow up on that. Uh, an article came out the other day. Nutri ingredients. I think they listed their top five dietary supplements for what's going on for immune health. Correct. And CBD hemp extract showed up. And uh, many people, I think, are confused. Um, so can you kind of just summarize that as this will be sort of your, your closing statement, if you will? Someone who's listening to this that has heard, hey, CBD is helpful potentially for stress and maybe for, for pain. How do you help them understand that hemp extracts belong in the immune toolkit right now next to the other big armaments and big weapons? Because if stress, the brain, the gut, and the immune system are all directly related, and if we're stressing out and glued to the television and not eating well um, because of just everything that's happening, we're working from home, we're not getting outside and exercising, the release of cortisol, the imbalance of the endocannabinoids in the brain that have to do with stress and fear directly reduce our immune cells' ability to fight infection. So when we balance the endocannabinoid system in the brain, in the reptilian part of the brain that responds to fear, perhaps with a CBD product, then it enables the immune system to do what it needs to do without being burdened by the excess stress hormones that are decreasing its immune capacity. Miles, spectacular. Everyone, please follow us at cvsciencestvyoutube.com. Miles Cyril, you can follow his Minute with Miles. Uh, you, you will get a copy of this recording. The information will be available. Please tell everyone to keep tuning in to our webinars. I hope we can all agree that the information that was presented today is really world-class information brought to you by an amazing company, CV Sciences, stands ready to be of service during this time. And it's such a pleasure to, to run an essential business 
and to be part of this huge explosion in self-knowledge and how to stay healthy, to stay healthy during this time of tremendous stress. And I hope the information that we shared with you today can help you stay healthy. We are open for business. Our products are on sale. There's something for everybody. Go to the website, go to the store, and never stop taking plus CBD. Colonel Dr. Lewis says, stay calm and take your CBD. That's his response. Instead of stay calm and carry on, stay calm and take your CBD. And until next time, this is CV Sciences signing off. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.